good morning. I'll be right back. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Even though it's raining and storming, it is still a great day. Good morning, Ryan. How are you? Thank you for sharing this time with me this morning. Even though it's storming and raining, I'm still excited about being here for a brand new day hi tori good morning i hope everyone had an absolutely wonderful weekend i had a very interesting weekend super 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 interesting but i did want to show you something because i noticed um on social media this weekend that some of the navy families were representing their midshipmen so i just wanted to say shout out to all the midshipmen of the u.s naval academy and of all of the service academy and every graduate in this season um shout out to you thank you for continuing in the journey i know it's interesting right now but the best is yet to come. So because I am a Navy football mom, I am a proud mom of a Navy midshipman. I'm got, I got my pom-poms here. Woo! Let's go, Navy. Continue to work hard. Mwah! God bless you guys. Thank you so much for your service. We, we certainly, certainly appreciate you for what you do. And I know that it's challenging out there right now, but guess what? <laughs> You can make it. You're winning. You're winning in life because you didn't quit. Don't give up. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this new day. Even though Father God is storming on the outside, some of us are having personal storms even on the inside, God. So we're thanking you even right now for being God in the midst of the storm. Have your way in our lives, in our homes, Father God, on the front lines, in the jobs. Lord, we thank you right now, God, for your immaculate healing power. Thank you for your virtue. Thank you for your great love. We thank you for your safety and protection. You are good all the time. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. I am excited about diving back into the millionaire from Nazareth. And as you all know, we are on chapter two and it is something special. We are learning and growing together. So if there is something, a thought that you have, if there's an idea that you have, um, please comment. Share the messages. Someone somewhere is waiting for you this morning to bless them this evening. If you happen to be um, 
on the other side of the world. And I just want to say thank you everyone for sharing the messages and thank you for those who are tuning in from the Philippines and from India. I'm like super excited about that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to everybody because we need one another. I need you and you need me. That's how the world goes around. So let's share this light and share this love. You are light and love. You, you're the gift, light and love. Share it. The Millionaire from Nazareth. This is written by Catherine Ponder. I don't own the rights to the book. I don't get paid for sharing this story. I just thought it would be a great idea um, and a good time to talk about changing our level of consciousness and moving into a new realm of the faith. Good morning for those that are just joining us. We are just getting started with um, the continuation of chapter two. We are on the bottom of the page of um, 45, how she became a successful union negotiator. Here is how one businesswoman poured forth thoughts and words of light, truth, and abundance on conditions of lack, both for herself and others, and transform them into conditions of abundance. Here's a story. Hey, uncle. My uncle's joining us this morning. Good morning. So many wonderful things have happened to me and mine since I began studying your book the prosperity secrets of the ages. I can only list the use of prosperous thinking as described in that book. Number one, at that time I began to study that book, I was unemployed. I spoke forth a prosperity statement every day that a good position with a salary of $15,000 or more per year is coming to me now in God's own wonderful way. The results, my total income last year as an employer consultant and negotiator of labor contracts for the employees association was in excess of $20,000. Now that may not sound like a lot to you, but let me tell you something. Speak what you need. Say what your desire is. Ask and it shall be given unto thee. I gave a copy of the Prosperity Secrets of the Ages to a friend who was not only unemployed, but also unhappily involved with a married man. I suggested that she declare daily I am now guided into my true place with true people and with true prosperity, quickly and in peace. A few months later, she married a fine, successful businessman, and they are presently expecting their first child. She no longer has to work. I began to speak forth daily the prosperity statement for my company. I give thanks for an annual $50,000 increase in revenue for the organization for whom I work. The results, $20,000 has been replaced in lost membership and an additional $30,000 revenue has been scheduled. Part of my responsibility in my job is that of labor negotiator. It is an unusual job for a woman. It fell into my lot to go up against the largest and most powerful union leader in this state and one of the most powerful in the United States. I had never negotiated on my own before. No one believed I had a chance. My own board of directors was about to desert me in the middle of my negotiations, the director gave notice of quitting the whole staff also, and the whole staff also threatened to quit. 
This was not related to my negotiations, however. In addition, the attorneys retained by my organization because of the imagined wrongs notified the board president that they withdrew their services. They would withdraw their services if I were retained. She then goes on to say, I spoke forth affirmations daily throughout the two month period. One of my favorites was, all things conform to the right thing, quickly and in peace. Here are the amazing results that came from those spoken words. Complete success in my negotiations. I have become famous for my courage and skill at handling the whole transaction. The president of the board gave me his complete confidence. He stood between me and the forces who were threatening me. He fired the attorneys. Two more attorneys came to my assistance at no cost to our organization. The whole board of directors now agree that my negotiations have established a precedent that has improved the labor re relations climate for the entire state. More beneficial results are happening daily. We have a new managing director who's very capable or compatible with the staff and me. My 16 year old daughter has learned the value of speaking forth prosperity affirmations daily. And she is on her way to a wonderful life. She has quadrupled her income since she began to declare, I am beautifully and appropriately supplied with the rich substance of the universe now. The employers whom I represented have individually given me very generous gifts. I have started one, I start I have started one employer on the way to success through giving him a copy of the prosperity secrets of the ages to study. I owned a second deed of trust that had been delinquent for two years. I was thinking about saying something and then I wanted to wait until this was done. So I'm glad she's coming up on it. I owned a second deed of trust that had been delinquent for two years. I affirmed light and prosperity for the person who owed me. He paid me off in full just before Christmas. For a dear friend who needed a job, I spoke this affirmation. You now move forward into your expanded good, divinely directed and lavishly prospered. He phoned me tonight to say he has landed the job he wanted. I was going to say to you that um, even as we're reading in the, um, the testimonials and you're seeing the numbers, it's not about the numbers and the specific money or dollar amount. It's about the fact that you begin to believe that there is an unlimited source of abundance that is available to you. And once we begin to speak the appropriate affirmations daily, that's when we be begin to see change. It's not the nagging, it's not the rushing, it's not being anxious, it's not that overzealousness. It is taking the time to do the work inwardly first and then outwardly. Lost objects have been found. After affirming I would soon be a size 10 again, one of my clients made me a present of a weight reducing program, which begins tomorrow. Since I took up the practice of prosperous thinking, my income seems to buy more and last longer. So no matter what the number is, whether it's 5,000, 2,000, 50,000, 150,000, 300,000, whatever the number is that you need or so desire, she says, my income seems to buy more and last longer. It is a good feeling 
to have a balance left over after paying the tithe and bills on time. My tithes are now 10 times what they were only a short time ago. So she has stated, basically she's saying as her income has increased, so has her level of giving. And that is so important. I know um, if you, you know, have listened to some ministers speak, or if you have um, even listened to mentors and those that do a lot of the um, motivational speaking, they talk a lot about seed time and harvest. And they say you plant the seed and in due time or due season, you will reap a harvest. And the more that you give, the more that you're going to receive in return. It may not be the exact same measure or the exact same thing or come back to you in the same way, but because you pour out, it's going to be returned back to you. And you can believe that because that's just the universal law of giving. There are some things that just are universal laws of truth that I really want us to begin to um, hone in on so that we fully understand that there is a universal supply. There's no lack. You have everything you need when you need it. You will always have everything you need when you need it. Just believe. The last, um, she's, we're going to do step four and step five. It says step four, by treating the available supply as the desired supply, Water becomes wine. So she goes back to the story um, about uh, Jesus's first miracle at Cana. You have already on hand what you need to meet the demands that are made upon you. Your good is adaptable. This is one of the great secrets we learn from Jesus's prosperity miracle at Cana. By treating the available supply as the desired supply, water became wine. Let's catch that. You already have on hand what you need to meet the demands that are made upon you. Your good is adaptable. She says, by treating the available supply as the desired supply, water became wine. Here is how to invoke the law of adaptability. Get your ink pen and your pencil ready. <laughs> the good you have on hand becomes adaptable and will meet your needs if you begin appreciating it and using it. The good that you have on hand becomes adaptable and will meet your needs if you begin appreciating it and using it. The good you have on hand may be nothing more than the use of constructive thoughts and words. Yet those are the only financial assets you need if you will begin to use them. In Jesus's prosperity miracles, he always took the materials at hand, such as they were, and used them. You too already have what is needed to begin meeting the needs of your life. God will help you when once you make the start in faith. So God will help us once we make the start in faith. It has been proven down through the ages that faith moves on substance to prosper and bless the one using it. It has been proven down through the ages that faith moves on substance to prosper and bless the one using it. When it is put into action, there is prospering power in faith. So where is the power? In here or in here, wherever you see your heart. Some people think it's the gut. Some people say it's your heart. Some people say it's your mind inside of your being. What you believe has power. What you think has power. What you say out your mouth, you're putting into force 
It goes into action. It has power. When it is put into action, there is prospering power in faith. Step five, how to pour faith, um, specific prosperity into stony water pots. <laughs> she said, even if you have nothing on hand, except your creative thoughts. <laughs> I love it. I love that. <laughs> Jesus took what was on hand, the hard stony water pots and common ordinary water. These two ingredients were all with which he had to work. Yet with them, he produced a miracle of abundance. He told the servants, symbolizing one's thoughts, to pour the water into the hard stony pots. They did not pour meagerly, but to the brim. Take what you have, fill it to the brim. You can take your rough circumstances, your bodily conditions, your human affairs, just as they are, and hold them in your mind. Then begin to praise them, bless them, and give thanks to all providing God that within them is the wine of peace, health, and success that is yours by divine right. Peace health and success are yours by divine right. You can take those burdens, those rough, heavy circumstances, those situations that seem unbearable, valleys that seem just too dry and desolate, and you can hold them in your mind and begin to bless it, to praise God for them and give thanks to God, all providing God, that within them is the wine of peace, health, and success that is yours by divine right. If hard, stony conditions are all you have to work with, ah, I like, I like it. She said, if hard, stony conditions are all you have to work with, then they're all you need with which to perform your miracle. Good morning, mom. Good morning. If that's all you got, use that. If all you got is doom and gloom to work with, then use that. If all you have is that little thought of doubt, I think that might not happen. Let's turn it around. Let's use that. Thank you, Lord. Treat the available supply as the desired supply. And it will become so. It will become so. You may be thinking, but there's nothing on hand with which to meet my need. Oh, yes, there is. There always is. Take the thought, the idea, the Bible verse, the prayer statement, or the passage in an inspirational book that appeals to you. Begin meditating upon it and declaring it. Bless and praise what you have regarding it, it, regarding it as abundance instead of condemning it and regarding it as lack. So take what you have and praise it. Even if you don't see it differently right now, take what you have and give thanks. Regard it as abundance. Oh Lord, I don't see myself out of this situation. <laughs> There's doom and gloom. <laughs> I'm going to praise you through this storm because out of this doom and gloom, you're going to make determination. You're going to make something beautiful. You're going to build me up. I'm growing stronger every day. I'm becoming more creative every day. I'm using my senses more every day. Thank you that I'm becoming more aware every day. Take the circumstances of your life just as they are. Take the people in your life just as you find them. Take the home conditions just as they are. Take your bodily health just as it is. Take your business affairs and financial matters just as they are. Take your personal dreams and your professional hopes 
just as they are. Let me stop for a second and let you guys know something about Ryan. You know, Ryan is a business owner and I also see in Ryan an investor. At the same time, you know, when you are learning and growing in your business, things, crap happens. I don't want to curse. <laughs> Sometimes I will say cuss words, but I'm not going to say a cuss word, but things happen. But I will tell you that Ryan has been so gracious in helping me and being patient with me. And I feel like it's been reciprocal back and forth to the fact that we can actually see our process manifesting to the greater good. And it's not just helping me or him, but it's going to help a whole lot of people. And after this part is over, yay! We're going to be able to move on to the next thing. Take what you have and use that. Don't curse it. Bless it. Don't despise it. Encourage it. Take what you have on hand. Use that. Take your personal dreams and your professional hopes just as they are. Take this period of life, whether you regard yourself as young old or somewhere in between, take it just as it is. All of these are rough, stony water pots. Take it as it is. It's okay. She says, then begin pouring into them the highest and best ideas you can hold about them. Begin to praise and bless that which you have previously condemned. There is a multiplying power for good that can be released through the use of this simple process. So we're going to pause right here today and just think on when she says meditate, she's, you know, and I'm going to give you my definition. You can look it up. Some people are like master meditators. I've just been learning through the past six, seven years on how to bring my body and mind into focus and to have control over my thoughts. But to, meditation is take that idea. Remember I showed you guys this piece of paper. I didn't toss it away because I think that this is, you know, it came back into my life for a reason right now. If you don't, if you're just learning um, how to bring your thoughts into captivity, if you're just learning how to quiet yourself, take a piece of paper and write down uh, a quote, a scripture, the idea that you have, the thought that you have. And, um, whenever, when, when you set aside a specific time, I like to, um, when I first started out, I started, I was started just one minute because <laughs> that's how much my mind zoomed around. <laughs> I like always thinking about a million things at once. Um, but I used to carry this around in my pocket in my wallet, um, because I needed to cleanse and renew my mind from some negative thoughts and ideas, some, some really horrible feelings that I was having. And this was um, Philippians 4.13, I believe it says, I press forward toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And so there was a time in my life where I was really just stuck stuck in a very ugly place. So because I couldn't um, figure out how to pull myself out of that hole, I took hold of the scripture and I carried it around with me and I put it in my pocket. So I encourage you, if you have a, um, if you can get an idea, if you have, if it could be a business idea, it can be a positive thought and just write it down. And for a couple moments a day, you know, maybe you do it once in the morning. Maybe you're in your car and your lunch break. Maybe you steal away from the family and go, you know, outside or into the bathroom or wherever you can find that quiet place. And it doesn't have to be hours and hours, but just concentrate your thoughts. Take a deep breath. Reset your mind and your body. Take out your piece of paper and read your thought to yourself. Say it out loud. Begin to quiet yourself so that you can start controlling your mind and dismissing, cleansing those tape recorders with all those negative thoughts or all that past stuff, because all that stuff is back there. It's done. We can't change it. 
We can't turn it around. It already happened. But what we can do is we can look forward. What we can do is begin today and start anew with a fresh thought, a fresh idea, using our very situation, whatever we have at hand, using this right here, right now. So I encourage you to just begin to praise and bless that which you have previously condemned. There is a multiplying power for good that can be released through the use of this simple process. Have an absolutely wonderful, wonderful day, everyone. Be safe on the roadways. You are safe. You are well. You are healthy. You are strong. You are vibrant. You are prosperous. You have great success. Success is doing the thing that you want to do right here, right now. Spending this time together this morning, you're successful. We did this. We committed ourselves to coming together and here we are. I love you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. There is no one in this world like you. So show up today. Be present. What is God's will for your life? For you to do exactly what you have to do today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. See you next time. Have a great day.